Hey, good day, people. Uh, Jeffrey Howells Cover Cleaning here, and what we're going to be doing is cleaning a home out in Clackamas, Oregon today. Um, it is a four-bedroom home. We've got ourselves the four rooms. Um, we got a little den area downstairs, the stairways, hallway, um, front family front room area as well, and some area rugs we're going to be cleaning. Um, Basically, this is about like a four-year-old home. The carpets have never been cleaned before, so it is very important to me because they were asking about uh, dry carpet cleaning, and um, I was like, hey, I do both, but uh, generally, in my opinion, this is my opinion, a lot of guys are going to argue about this, a lot of you OP guys are going to be um, completely disagreeing, but I think that the, that stuff encapsulation and bonnet cleaning and all that should be left in my opinion to maintenance cleaning I know it has its time and its place um, it's a very excellent aggressive scrubbing you know with a 175 in places but I think it still um, needs the uh, extraction of a hot water extraction so I will combine the two and I do uh, hybrid carpet cleaning most of the time so in that aspect you in, in this home here, four years of debris accumulation in the carpeting. So, yeah, it's extremely, extremely vitally important that you go through and you uh, extract as much of that out. Considering in a home that you know, gets cleaned regularly on a yearly basis, usually can have easily... Um, and this is with them vacuuming all the time. I can easily, with my Kirby, pull out a, a half a bag or a full bag of just of that abrasive debris that accumulates in the carpeting that, that their vacuum basically has absolutely no chance of even reaching um, because vacuums are designed with different purposes. Um, this is one thing that you really don't know when you move into a house, you have new carpeting that you want to take care of, you really should go get educated at like a, a vacuum store. Um, I hate Stark's vacuums, I mean that's the vacuum cleaner that is um, pretty much predominant over here in the northwest area. Um, I hate them because I think they're overpriced and they're ridiculous, but they are very knowledgeable in vacuum cleaners. So a lot of times it would behoove one to go to a specialty place just to learn about what they need because um, I can tell you this vacuum here is excellent for pulling up sand and debris and all that stuff but if you're an owner a pet owner have a cat or something like that and you've got a lot of um mounted hair in the carpeting um the kirby isn't going to be your saving grace at that point so um look at something like a shark with one of those double rollers on the bottom that have like the rubber grips and stuff that would do far better at pulling out matted hair than the kirby however i've got other equipment for that purpose so um yeah, um, and the purpose that I use this for is specifically for that that uh, abrasive debris and sand and, and grit that gets trapped in the carpets. So the the heavier debris that you know a cheaper vacuum doesn't have the power to pull out of the carpeting. The uh, the Kirby has a very good motor and agitation system and airflow and all those things working together helps it to pull out all that that crud from the carpeting. So. We're going to go through, we are doing a very thorough vacuum to get as much of the four years of debris out of the carpet as we can. Um, we are going to pre-spray, we're going to agitate using a grinding room upstairs and then downstairs I notice that there's a little bit more cat hair because that's where the cat primarily reigns is down there. However, um, I did notice that there was, we picked up a lot of cat hair just with the vacuum. so. Um, we probably will, um, I might pull out the CRV for agitating the downstairs area. I haven't totally made up my mind yet, but, you know, these are things you got to be considering as you're, you're cleaning the carpet because that's what produces a premium carpet cleaning is um, something that's very dynamic and is um, adjusted to the job rather than just banging out the same thing at every single job because not every single... Um, house that you walk into is going to exhibit the same amounts of soiling. Um, I was told by the, the owner that they have, uh, she puts foot lotion on her feet in her bed, so I know that, the, so there's going to be a right there, 
flag that there's going to be oils and things in the carpet. So um, knowing that um, Grease Hog by Vacaway um, deals towards more of the, the greasy sort of substances, especially for like food and things like that. Um, I combine that with some peroxide to get uh, a real good cleaner. So um, upstairs I'm going to be using that because it will clean and sanitize the carpets, but it'll also deal with the, the lotion and stuff that's in the carpeting as well. So um, a lot of times, you know, developing a uh, your cleaning solution based upon what you're actually going to be cleaning is really what you guys need to be doing rather than just sticking to one cleaner to clean everything which I don't think anybody does anyways but I just bring that up as a point so pretty basic and in, in the mask you can see how it's kind of matted down here so little oils and things like that and we've got a uh, the master closet in the back here so we're gonna get going we're gonna do our three-stage cleaning and um, as far as I'm concerned the three-phased or three-stage cleaning whatever you want to call it um, seems to be a winner I haven't had any issues with it whatsoever We've just completed phase one with the pre-vacuum throughout the entire house. We got all the rooms, we got the offices, we got the family room, we got everything. We even went back on the stairways and got the uh, stairways with our hand vac. So uh, it's critical that you get the, the dust and accumulated debris up from everywhere that you possibly can. Now we're moving into phase two, which is the application of our pre-spray. Um, I did mention earlier that we do have some lotion over here, so I mixed up a product that is going to work with our the greasy stuff that's in the carpeting up here. Um, I made up two gallons, so I'm just going to um, use it throughout the entire rooms up here. And then when we go downstairs, um, to me it looks like this normal normal wear and tear so we can probably go revert back to our sodium carbonate peroxide solution that we've been using and that should work just fine on the stairways and all that we got up some uh, cat hair and stuff like that not a whole lot but you know we're always keeping our eye open for that so part a of phase two is a pre-spray part b of phase two is the agitation in fact i might uh just remove you know, take out phase three and just call it four phases. We're doing four phase cleaning. I might make it easier because basically what we're doing is we're following any of you guys who have taken the IICRC certification courses know about chat. So you got chemical heat, agitation, and dwell time. And that's pretty much reflected in the uh, four phase cleaning process, if you want to call it that, where... You begin with a good vac and get the debris out of the carpeting. You put down your pre-spray solution. You agitate it in while it's dwelling. You set up your hoses and everything out for um, hot water, steam cleaning, and extraction. So all pretty much all four of your bases are covered there. However, we're going even further with uh, the pre-vacuum, which the IICRC um, highly recommends you do anyways because you're removing nearly... 80% uh, or more of the debris from the carpeting beforehand and you have to think that you know a lot of that debris is probably just going to turn to mud during the steam cleaning process and depending on how fast you're going you're leaving potentially leaving a lot of uh, that stuff in the carpet um, yeah you're rinsing with clean water you're pulling some of that out but you're turning a lot of it into mud and how much of it you know if it takes you know, an hour for the carpets to dry. Think of uh, just muddy, dirty carpets that are drying. Anyways, moving right along.
Okay, we've just completed phase two um, upstairs. We agitated and preconditioned everything so it's ready to go, as well as the stairways, so it's ready to go. So we're going to begin running our lanes and stuff in to uh, prep us for phase three, which is also going to give it uh, plenty of dwell time. But what I got some uh, various wool airy rugs here. And what we were using throughout the rest of the house is Incap Green by uh, Vacaway. It's a very good cleaner. It's a low pH, or actually it's pretty neutral pH. I think it's like literally 7.4 pH. So um, very low as far as not leaving any residues or having you having to do some sort of major pH swing to, to get things readjusted. So um, very good cleaner. It's wool safe. It's going to clean these guys up. In fact, they already look brighter. But what I'm going to do right now um, before I run our hoses in, I'm just going to go ahead and take this brush and give it a good grooming. So we'll clean upstairs. We'll finish the stairways. We'll come down. We'll, we'll, we'll cap these guys off down here. And then we will pre-treat and agitate the floors here in the front room area. And then we've got this little den area that we will retreat and agitate all right we shall be commencing phase three we've got our hoses running in water temperature is up to about 230 plus right now we've got our corner guards in all the key places going down there around the corner out the door we've got another one here but generally Three or four corner guards is uh, more than sufficient for pretty much any job that you're going to do. So I say four, maybe five max to have on the truck, and you're pretty much covered for anything. I've never had to use more than four, honestly, with my cleaning, and I've been doing this for about 15 years. So uh, personally, you could probably get by with four on the truck. And then when you do need another one, um, I've had a, a case where one of them was broke. I had to uh, use one of my uh, two-gallon jugs, and that worked fine as well because that just held, you know, kept the uh, hoses and lines from scraping against the wall. So um, you be creative. Use what you need to use. Um, these guys are about 20 bucks a piece. 24, 20, right around there, depending on where you get them. This is the Duck brand ones. These are probably the, the heavier duty. I mean, there are imitations but that are a lot cheaper, but they break a lot easier. These last longer. They're more durable. They actually look better. And they're adjustable, so you can um, pull those feet down and out to... Uh, you see there's one down there that I have on the stairway, so one of them feet is on one step and then another foot is actually pulled out and down onto another step. So uh, we're going to go ahead and get started here. Alright, one last thing to note before we get started here. When performing premium carpet cleaning, premium carpet care in the Clackamas, Oregon area, one thing that I do is I always keep my uh, rake, carpet rake with me so that I can groom out the carpets when I'm done. Um, some people like the way the, the shark tooth patterns look. Some people, you know, I personally, I don't. I think that the shadowing that those things cause hides spots and stains. And I'd rather just pull it out, reset the nap, and let it dry, covers dry faster. So, uh, you guys, do what you want. Just make sure that you have a rhyme and a reason for why you're doing what you do. Alright, one more thing to note, um, because the, the soil room wasn't so terrible upstairs, there weren't spots and spills all over the place, um, I used our ink cap green, I agitated well, and the, the truck PSI is probably down to about 150, um, anywhere in the house is probably what really needs to be rinsed the most, but I'm thinking that combining a little bit more of a hybrid situation scenario going on that we might be able to get this so that the carpets are dry within like 30 to 45 minutes which would be pretty cool. So we're hardly using any water to rinse, um, we're just kind of doing surface level stuff which I'm not sure what's going to happen up here, I might have to turn the PSI up 
But for right now, I'm just going to give it a go and see what happens. I'm not